Okay, folks, we're back uh, again for lab four. Um, so this will be just giving you a start and hopefully give you an idea. Um, so the example we're going to be looking at here is um, the anthermonic oscillator with a possibly an external force. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do using the worksheet, just figuring this out. So uh, let me rename this. This is a uh, worksheet using the worksheet. Okay, and we're going to solve a specific problem with a specific mass, specific lambda, specific k, specific initial displacements, specific initial velocity. Um, and we've no external force here. Okay, um, by hand write this as a system of two first order initial value problems. So um, I'm, I'm going to pause and I'm going to kind of write something down and then show it to the camera. Okay, okay we'll show you the work here. So. The first thing you do is um, you set V to be the first derivative. Now you do this no matter what, um, but in this problem it makes particular sense because the derivative of the displacement is the velocity, that's what the V is first, that's okay. You differentiate both of these and you get that the first uh, derivative of the velocity is the second derivative of the displacement and both of these of course are just acceleration. So now I go into the um, differential equation which is um, m times the second derivative of displacement plus um, lambda, which is five times the first derivative of displacement plus uh, k, which is six times the displacement is equal to the external force, which is zero. So the question we're looking at has mass equal to two, um, damping coefficient five and spring constant is six. And we put in the first derivative of displacement dx dt equal to v, we put in the second derivative of displacement equal to dv dt. Now what we have to do there was solve this for dv dt. So what I did is I took away the 5v and 6x from both sides and then I divided both sides by 2. Now you might be wondering why did he leave it as minus 6 over 2? Well later on this is all going to be done with m's, lambdas and k's. So I just want to show you, you know, it works like this. So we have a differential equation for v, that's the first one, and a differential equation for x, that's the second one. And we should put the initial conditions v of 0 equal to 0 and x of 0 equal to 1 uh, there. Okay. So it made me small again. Okay, so we've done that by hand business. In Calumet, put it to t. If I was there. t. One. t. And go from 0 to uh, 5 in steps of 0 0.1. That's no problem. In column B, put X. And of course, I like this bold, centered. Um, put one the initial displacement there, and then this is V and the initial displacement there. Okay. In cell B3, which is this, write code that uses the previous the T0, X0, V0. So let's use this um, to give the Euler method approximation to X. Um, at this next time. This is x1. And recall the Euler's method is simply the next value is the previous value plus the step size times the previous slope. Okay, so I'm going to do the x1 because that's kind of the easy one. Uh, so the next value of x is the previous value, which is this, plus the step size, which is 0 0.1, times the previous slope. Now we go into our differential equations and we see that the derivative of um, x, the slope of x, is v. So it should be the previous v, which is this yoke. Okay, now what you have to do is go in here and write down the Euler method um, for v, which is a bit more involved. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to uh, drag the code down. Now, if you have t going down to uh, 5, And this is will be as simple. Now, what I'm doing doesn't actually work because I have to do the Vs as well, but it's going to be as simple as taking two of these and right-clicking or left-clicking this. And now you're getting nonsense there, but that's uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, so if you have them both done, you can just click this little box. And then what you'll do is you'll select all of these and, and select the columns because then you get um, nice labeling. And it does understand that the first column is the X and the other two are functions that you're plotting. And insert a graph. Okay, so that's for you kind of just to understand um, how to deal with these second order differential equations. Okay, 
Now we repeat in VBA. So into VBA. So, uh, re uh, so remember our framework. Um, that's saying write down 320 on page 125. Okay, so that's the, this, uh, the equation up here, this yoke. Okay, um, so we're going to be working with that. So we need to write that as two first order differential equations. So uh, that shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'm just going to, you do the same thing and you end up with the VDT is equal to minus lambda over M times V minus K over M times X. The initial velocity we're, we're calling U, but that won't be a variable. And I think that the initial X is going to be A, but similarly, that's not going to be a variable. The initial values of things shouldn't really be variables unless they come into it somewhere else. So yeah, that that uh, that thing in the bottom right of your screen is supposed to be an A. So this is our um, second order differential equation written as two first orders. Okay. Now I'm saying here, remember your framework, define the variables, give the initial conditions, print the current values, calculate the next values. So uh, maybe here, figure that out. Um, yeah. So we're going to write a program that takes all of this input. Now, um, what you should do, you should have, maybe we'll just do it a bit easy here for the time being. Um, maybe we'll put in some stuff manually just to give you an idea of what the worksheet should look like eventually. So you'll have T, X, V, and then the input. So say H, final time. Uh, damping coefficient. Sorry now, I'm being a bit stupid about this, but it's, I, you know, if you want to do something, try and do it right. Uh, lambda, um, mass, k. Now u goes here, but u is not a variable, and the initial displacement. And what I'm going to, I'm going to put in some values here just to start us off. Five, um, point, I don't know, point two, one, um, uh, let's say point eight u then let's say one initial displacement one and just make this a bit smaller it's probably too small no oh, it's okay for the numbers that i'm using um let's show the center everything right so this is where you're going to get your your variables from so um there's an outline now here it's saying why previous thing um that should really go to a to c now, I'm not going to put that in my code. Now, this is where you, pre you should be pretty much um, similar. The, the setup is kind of the same. And if you put the time in, uh, you should be in a good position. So we definitely want option explicit. Want you to define variables. So that's the dim, whatever. Define variables. So you're going to want uh, certainly TXV. They're the main things. Then the user defined input H, T, lambda, M, uh, K. Possibly some, there possibly might be an external force that has parameters. That's up to you to look at. Now U is not, U is not a variable. Initial values are not variables. Okay. And also for the code, you want a counter, which you should use the row. So they're all, give them all initial values. And then just the two that I'm going to focus on. Um, so the DBLT is always going to start at zero. The DBLX, so you can have the label U, but this is, U is going, not going to be a variable. You're just going to take, or even the A is not going to be a variable. You're just going to take DBLX to be cells, row two, column eight, nine, 10, 11. And dblv equal to cells to pen. So there's no u variable or a variable. Um, there's no need for that. Okay, so that's, uh, you also have to, and, and, and the rest. And you're going into your loop. So that's going to be do. Uh, so you're going to print current t, x, and v. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, that's easy. 
um, calculate next t, next v, next um, x. Now the question comes in about the old variables. Like if you try and do, say if you try and do, so t is no problem, but say you do next v, so v is equal to, and obviously this is done properly, v is equal to v so step size times the derivative of v. But the derivative of v is some kind of function, we'll call it f1, it depends on x and v. Okay? Now when you go to do the next x value, so you do x plus uh, is the previous value plus step size times the derivative of x, derivative of x is v, you've got a problem because after you calculate this, um, now the v is the next v. And if you try and be clever and swap them around, you're going to have a problem because now the x here is the next x. So you're going to have to do something with the old um, variables. So you either take, um, say, the v here. So you need to use old v. Either take old v from worksheet, i.e. where you printed it, cells, uh, the row number, and the column for v is 3, or define v old. And doing that is you'd have an extra variable up here, v old. It doesn't need initial value, but just before you calculate the next v, you record um, the old v, v old equal to v, okay? And then you just loop until stopping rule is satisfied. Okay, um, so that's what's going on there. I think we did all that. Um, don't prompt. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So that's 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 an Euler's method. Uh, what about Heinz method? Uh, rename more VABA. So on this one, it's going to be kind of similar. Um, the addition of parameters makes this hard. As okay, what are we saying? Repeat the above, but using uh, we don't have to print the predictors. Additional parameters make this hard. It makes it hard to find the derivatives as functions. Instead, do something like this. Okay, so I, I think I might let you off on this. So like as before, you define the variables, you give them their initial values. Um, it seems to me, do we see, Okay, there's no exercise here, but that's okay. Do we see any, um, like, where are we putting in the parameters? Okay, so I think what it's saying is don't use functions, basically. Okay, so we'll have to do this. You'll do printing, t, x, and v, calculate the predictors. Now the code needs interpretation. So this is the slope of x, which is just v. And this is the slope of v, which is in terms of x and v. Then you're going to calculate x and v using Heinz method. Now, what I'm saying is that you actually, the derivative of v, you, you, you don't write a function. You just put in, it's just the same. You put in the, um, the minus lambda over m times v minus k over m times x. Then you calculate x. And then you're saying you cannot use x as it has been changed. In, you either use the printed x in column two or you use an old x or vice versa. Use a printed v um, or define an old v. And after that, it shouldn't, it, it's kind of similar to Heinz method. You're taking two slopes, one the uh, slope according to the point you're at and one according to the predicted next point. And that's the same with both of them. Um, and you're upping the counter, etc. So alternatively, calculate the next bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. There are other workarounds which are using the old variables. Additional functionality might include calculating and plotting the function, the force um, alongside the velocity and displacement. That's interesting. So 
um, or even more of them. So you can plot T, um, X, V. Now probably, yeah, interesting to uh, the force as well. Um, now how the reason you can plot that is because the force is equal to uh, mine. I'm just going to write L here. L V over M minus uh, K X over M. And that's interesting because you'll see when it, with a damped harmonic oscillator, when the force is big, it'll be either when the displacement is big or when it's moving fast. And you can kind of mess around. Um, you can include external forces um, and see what happens. Put in a constant external force, see what happens, etc. All of these are kind of things that you can do in Marina's class. Um, we've done some case studies in the lectures of kind of more interesting problems. And um, what else is to be said here? Yeah, I, I will. There will be on Canvas um, particular setups and particular values you should see and particular graphs you should see, but that's the, the basic setup.